Bring Tavern Tales, my name is Nimsh, I'm here with Lothar and Raven to bring you this amazing tournament, 20,000 prize pool, 32 players, Swiss, last year standing. Could have, could we ask for more? Probably not. But Maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> Lothar will always ask for more. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that dude. Really? Yeah. yeah, I'm the annoying dude that will always, always ask for something else that is currently available. <laughs> But no, the tunnel overall is fantastic. Just the overall form. I was speaking to a few players in the break then, and you know everyone's pretty happy with how it's gonna how it's gonna play out this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have half of the players happy already because they've won the first match, and half of them uh, a bit concerned because uh, they are at zero one at the moment. You can see the scores on the screen. Uh, screen. So uh, it's half and half, right? 16 to 16. And we see Gara actually losing his match. I was talking to him a bit, and he said he had the most amazing match with. Uh, being the, the having the worst luck ever, but still he got pretty excited, and I I couldn't tell if he won or lost because he was super happy about the game overall. Well, he was telling us about scenarios that can happen, like I would say one to few thousand games, and well, he was excited about being so unlucky. <laughs> so I, I guess that with that unluck he had at that point, if he would have a superpower, he would probably just bleed in the water while sharks are nearby. So. Yeah, he was pretty unlucky in that game. Yeah, nice to see Gara put a positive spin on it, though. And, you know, um, as we you know, saw him come over, he was still happy. You know, like, he's, he's really pumped. And it is only one game as well. So, as we said earlier, we are doing five rounds of Swiss. So, none of these guys are out yet. Yeah, the first game, losing the first game is not a problem at all It's in Swiss. Like, you have, you have still that mindset that it's only one loss. I can still win for more. At least in this Swiss, because it's five rounds, right? If the tournament would would have been more, uh, would have been have uh, would have more players, it will be more rounds. But in this one, you have still four more rounds, and you need only to win three to advance to the top sixteen. If the cut would have been higher, like an example, top eight, then you might start be worrying because you need to win four more to have a chance at the yep. top eight because there might be still people who have the same uh, exact amounts of wins as you, but you might be are ranked at ninth or 10th, an example. Yeah. But uh, in this situation, losing one the first match is not the problem. You can still advance to the next stage by just winning three more matches. So it's not bad. It's yeah. okay -ish. A lot of players are playing. Uh, they, they're even starting at the moment. So the match that we selected for you guys uh, for the next round, for this round, is Moody versus Powder. And Moody from Romania, one of the best Romanian players. Like, everybody knows RDU, but I think if not for RDU, people know Moody. He was in the... Uh, was it top four at DreamHack Bucharest? No, it was uh, top eight, if I remember, remember correctly. He was, in the, I'm sure he was in the quarterfinals. And if he would have won, I would be playing him in the semifinals instead of San Sivka, if I remember correctly. That was the case. Yeah, so he got pretty far. And then Krushna Poka, he also got pretty far. So he's always there somewhere in the top eight. And I think he also represented Romania in the IESF. Uh, tournament, so he went to uh, was it Korea? I think in Seoul there was the, the finals for ISF, so he's one great player himself, and uh, playing a lot of mid-range and control decks, I believe. Yeah, and then so on the other side of that as well is Powder, where, you know, uh, I think anyone who you know knows the scene at all in terms of professional play knows who he is. Um, had a lot of success in the past, and I, but at the moment does is pretty much suffering from the second place finish, which isn't a terrible thing at all to consistently finish second place in tournaments. But again, I was talking to him a bit earlier, he's like, yeah, I kind of want to win this one and actually get that first place finish at, at last. He is like a final boss. Like, I've been <laughs> talking to Powder, I think, at Insomnia, and he was going on a four-hour rant about his top top uh, finishes where he was in the final and lost have have he won ever anything at least once Lothar do I, you I don't think so actually he was always on the top and like um, was it the national championships the Swedish national championships that he won no that was no he got second he got second <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first one was wow Lothar the, the, right, the, yeah, the burn yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then like uh, there was like the GigaCon, wasn't there, where Spo won his teammate. So um, you know those yeah, guys from the finals. Feels bad, man. Yeah, but maybe this much. time, <laughs> right? Maybe this time. Well, they, they are uh, one zero at the moment, so they won their first matches. Uh, whoever wins the second uh, second game will be two zero in the Swiss format. So maybe one or two more wins, and he is through to the top sixteen. Yeah, I mean at this point. Uh, what you want to have probably is to have a perfect score just to in theory have the um more suc uh, less successful player as your opponent in the first round of the top 16 because the first player in this Swiss after the Swiss will be paired against the 16th player in this Swiss ranking so in theory you get the player that 
loses the most, right? But in practice, this might not be the case. It's just all about having certain matchups, right? In yeah. the, in the begin in the beginning. So uh, sometimes you, you you want to be paired against an op against an opponent that has a meta game call that is being you know good against you. Or, uh, sorry, you, you have a good uh, matchup against, but you might not be as well prepared against a player that is losing more hard. games because he maybe has a less popular lineup. Yeah, and I think one of the big things for for this specific match for these two is if you know whoever wins goes two nil up, and as we said earlier, you need three two. So it means you only have to win one more, you know, at the very least to just like go through into the next day. So pretty good game overall, and it is going to be Powder's Druid versus Moody's Paladin. Druid versus Paladin. I think this matchup favors Paladin. We don't know what Paladin it is yet, but overall, I think Paladins have a, a good matchup overall. But then again, Druid can draw into Innervates, can draw into Wild Groves. And those are the cards that you're looking for, uh, mostly. And there is Ooh. double innovate. So d double innovate opening there from Powder. Whereas Moody is probably going to see those secrets get thrown away. Although secrets can work early on in the game to sort of snowball a little bit. It's never really what you want. You want to save that to a little bit later when Mysterious Challenger comes out. But most of the battle is definitely a good start. But um, I'm pretty sure we saw Powder actually have the Living Roots. Uh, opening as well, so that's going to yeah, be really strong, awesome. like really strong versus power. Then you can pretty much guarantee a kill uh, on turn two versus almost any minion they're going to drop. Mm -hmm. The problem is that Map Paladin will just play sl more slowly, right, into uh, after the Living Roots, and just kill those one-one minions with the Masterful Battle. And it's not a problem. You can play Secrets on turn one and two, and just not develop the board, and they will take you. Uh, you will take the advantage uh, from the weapon that be is being built by the Masterful Battle, which is like a on top of spawning three minions for three mana, yeah. you can just get a weapon which is perfect for those one one tokens from the living roots. So yeah. it's not a big pro not a big problem for now. There's also a good uh, card for um, for Moody here, which is uh, Keeper of Ulduman, and this is one of the best cards versus Druid Let because you can change the if they innervate the Druid of the Claw as a four six, you can change it to the three three. That can be dealt with. Yeah, I think we're just reducing the power of the, you know, like the normally big, tough to deal with minions of the druid's going to be huge. Um, not at, at the best opening in the world, though. Like <laughs> co competitive spirit on turn one never feels great because maybe it wouldn't be as bad if he say had like a mini bot or a knife juggler for turn two, but because he has nothing, he's probably going to hero power. If that one one survives, then the comp spirit only makes that a two two, right? So that's the reason uh, Moody, uh, Moody chose to not play that card there, but. Really slow for the Paladin, and the Druid has all the stuff in the world at the moment. To be honest, I would have played that competitive spirit because if you if you wait so much time on turn one and you don't play anything, you are bluffing that you have a secret. But if you're not, and this is the case with uh, with Moody right now, is that you you're telling your opponent, okay, I have a redemption or competitive spirit in my hand because that's the only thing I can play on turn one basically with asking myself a question, should I do it or not? Yeah. The problem was like, he didn't know there's living roots, so if you go for competitive spirit and uh, there is a wild grove on the other, sand, the, uh, on the, the other side, you just go into a dude, which is a 1-1, one, one, and you buff your, your dude. So you and that's not bad. I, you have a board present against druid. It's a 2-2 two, two Yeah, million. I think... Um, and you have an option of killing Danas' Aspirant next turn with your massive battle. That's a huge swing. And I think it's very needed against the Paladin in general, uh, sorry, against the Druid in general, to have anything on board at any given point of the game. Yeah, I think one of the problems as well is just look at the curve in general. Obviously, it's not helped, it sort of has helped him for drawing a juggler, of course, you kind of want a two drop, but now it's like, how far down the line does that competitive spirit even come out now, like turn five? Yeah, like, so exactly. sudden, Suddenly, like, the okay, you know, the card could have just buffed a one one, but now it's doing actually nothing until turn five, six, yes. maybe seven when he's got time, because mm -hmm. if he starts to curve into challenger, then challenger not going to pull it because obviously yes. it was in his hand. So uh, I think just for an on-curve point of view, it was difficult to pass up the opportunity to play that. But double innovate into Ancient of Law <laughs> normally is a pretty good play. Yeah, especially because you can clear the board and you have to pull up with Shade of Nextramas. Uh, <laughs> yep. I uh, mean, you play two mana for a 5-5 five five because you replace two cards in your hand. What is to... Uh, like I thought you were just going to say, what is Druid? <laughs> You can ask that too, I'm just, it's ridiculous, right, when you think about it. Your opponent played a 5-5 five, five minion on turn 2. If that, if the rules of the game would have been different than Harson, like an example, the minions would not stack up damage on themselves, and they would just heal like in Magic, an example, this Let would be backbreaking in general. So yeah. This can be um, answered though, uh, not this turn, but if he goes for Master for Battle, there is... Uh, 
Powder will have to use the, the hero power or Wrath uh, or just play the Shade and heal only one of the dudes. So he doesn't have a swipe, but even if he will have a swipe, the swipe was not available. And then there is Keeper or uh, Blessing of Kings. So this 5 fight can still be answered. Yeah, I think one of the big things here is Powder's not... Uh, luckily not done the thing where you innovate something big out early and then you've just got nothing until say turn seven you know mm -hmm. and you've just got to be effectively be all in on that menu powder has two shades a wild growth and a wrath like so much flexibility in his hand already that you know even if this five five gets dealt with well he already has a shade and the next turn he can have the second shade down and just can, uh, keep snowballing there as opposed to just going all in on one minion and hoping it's enough till say turn six and another important factor it's dealt at least five damage Right, Th this this card that not only was played on turn two as being a really huge factor for your opponent's decision because he needs to deal with that minion, is that you are pushing for the damage, which is the goal of the druid anyway, because you want to put your opponent at 14 health, finish him off with the force of nature savage roar, or just double for a savage roar when you have a shade on board, and uh, basically that's it. So now even with that keeper of Ulduman. Uh, probably you would have to sacrifice the whole board, so that's cool. Yeah, right? because like normally you would attack with the weapon, right? But like you cannot take another five. Or well, can it's you? Free, It'll be three. Right? It will be three. Oh but yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot from one and, minion. And the problem as well is you, you're setting up a very swipeable board as well. <laughs> so you could still got the thing. It almost has to happen. Um, but if the druid's got swipe on the next turn, you're in so much trouble. Like Moody's have just been on the back foot since that. You know, that a, a turn, a, a, well, c the Comp Spirit, but also a turn to uh, Ancient of Law normally, normally does that to you. Yeah, but imagine if you would actually play the Competitive Spirit and just Hero Power instead of the Life Dragon, right? Because the 1-1 one, one would have been killed. Whatever would happen, he would have been killed by the either the 1-1 one, one from the Living Roots or the Hero Power. And then you go for the Competitive, uh, sorry, for the Massive Battle and your opponent is in a pickle. What do I do? Do I kill it? Do I trigger the Avenge? That puts a lot of bluff. Uh, onto the board. Yeah, because all the secrets except for, say, redemption are actually good outcomes for the Paladin, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so not playing the competitive spirit bites him back by a huge mar margin. I think he's still in an okay shape if he goes for Pilot of Shredder here. Do you think he's going to play Avenge just to not play competitive spirit? Yeah, there, there's no point to play Combative Spirit, I believe. Um, you still want to sh the Shade to trade into your Shredder. Um, if it doesn't, you will trade your Shredder into it. So Avenge should be fine. Avenge on board before turn 6 is always fine, because most likely you will curve out on turn 6 with two minions if you're missing uh, a Mysterious Challenger. So yeah. it's very important to have that already on board. Where uh, before you you free. play multiple minions on board, which can trigger now the Avenge from yeah. that point. This game is far from lost uh, for Moody though, uh, th because this is overall a good matchup for Paladin. Uh, what Paladin needs to do, he needs to get uh, Moody to a specific health threshold to be able to win the combo. And if he does not manage to do it, then Moody will be able to play those Mysterious Challenger, play the Tyrion at some point and lock um, Father from, from going through. Yeah, this is interesting actually. So it looks like he's played the uh, comp spirit purely because he has this. He has the keeper of Aldermans in hand, so he can reduce the shade back down to only three attack, and the shredder will actually still survive. Mm -hmm. So he can do that next turn combined with Avenge to then sort of you know guarantee the procs there. Or the now trade into Sylvanas. <laughs> yeah, but he, uh, the Sylvanas will get the drop from the shredder. Oh, that's okay if it's Doomsayer. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, then it's fine. You know, but he's, he's playing into the Doomsday drop, of course. Do you go into a dude first uh, before you trade to have a chance to give him the one-one, and then maybe whatever you get, uh, just change it with the with the keeper. Let me think. Yeah, that's, that's the correct play. Yeah, the, he could also, you know, try and rely on Noble Sacrifice doing some work and they're forcing two mana out of the Druid from the hero power potentially, but it's definitely a lot riskier because if Sylvanas can steal one of the, the you know the better minions, then you know the snowball effect from that turn two we saw is just gonna get even worse. Alright, oh, so he's going for it. Shredder dropping a free two. That will be a nice addition to Powder's board. And now Modi in trouble. Do you play both secrets in hero power here? I think Keeper okay. is fine. It's, it pulls the, the biggest power on board. You st you have to still fight with the minions, but then you're running out of options. 
Well, the strategy against Druid is just to play minions. Otherwise, you can't really battle for the for the board, right? If you have like every single HP point that you have on your board, Druid has to deal with by actually dealing damage, not by hard, hard removal, because he's lacking that. That's another point that I'm really interested to see what will Blizzard do in the future about the Druid class, because it lacks the removal. Like the only thing that that is a class removal uh, for Druid is Mulch and Neutralize. And kind of has a huge, like, downside <laughs> of yep. playing those yep. cards. So a yeah. little bit of a downside. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And we're really interested how the game will be developed. But for now, putting just minions on board is the best answer yep. against Druid. And this shade, look how still alive somehow. <laughs> it and might only have one health, but it's still attacks. It, well, fire. you know, one health maze will be a hundred at this point, mining it because it's hiding behind the druid with the claw. There's no consecrate from the paladin, and there's no way for him to get to that, and it's only going to get bigger. And now Moody's got to be thinking, well, Savage Raw just ends the game for for me now. Like, and there's not a lot he can actually do about it. He can uh, reduce the druid with the claw down if he wants to, try and make it more manageable. Um, you know, play the mini bot and maybe noble sacrifice just to slow the damage down. Yeah, but but you know. So maybe he, maybe he just has to avenge instead to just to try and get something on the board that sticks. So it's, uh, it's definitely a rough spot here, and I just think the the, the turn two onwards from Powder because he managed to use the Ancient of Law into s other cards that could be used very early on. There's just been just too much for Powder to deal with here. All right, so Woody is going for the board development play instead of reducing damage, but he's taking 13. He, l he loses, right? Yeah, he loses right uh, right here with the force. Like, Savage Root doesn't even matter. Like, one of those is lethal for sure. Yeah, and he's just going to test now because because he can hero power to test for the get down and then he can force of nature still. Then this is fine. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of ways of yeah. getting your opponent. But the, um, just the overall snowball effect from turn two there, we see, see the power of Druid in full action. Yeah, we do see the power of Druid, but on the other hand, Moody is not in a bad shape. He still has the warrior and has um, Druid himself. So right now, instead of going into a mirror match, he can probably take the warrior, unless it's a control warrior. I would say it's patron, though. Yeah, I think if it's patron, you probably prefer to play patron into druid than, um, the, than the druid mirror. But also, it depends on whether he feels w what he needs to beat Powder's other decks as well. Because this is last hero standing, if you then lose with a deck that's actually favored versus his other two, then you're really disadvantaging yourself there in terms of how you want to progress through the overall matchup. Whereas Conquest yep. format, you, uh, you actually just need to win with every deck, so you just go for it. Whereas last hero standing, you I think it's a little bit heavier on their like deck Strategy, choices per round yeah. yeah yeah that's true and uh there are 24 players by the way playing druid in this tournament right 24 players from 32 yeah 24 that is that, that's actually i would actually crazy. say that i was expecting around 30 <laughs> because the druid class is so ridiculous oh did you right? think more yeah oh, i'm surprised it was that many Really? Yeah. Because I think there's, there's definitely a point in a in a tournament like this where you presume everyone's to bring bring in Druid to then just bring Druid counters. Because you'd be playing, you always can always win. Like this is every class, deck right? can always win. Yeah, but then like <laughs> you, when you bring Druid, you also agree to play the coin flip matchups because you will play a lot of Druid versus Druid, and do you want to maybe avoid that? But can you really bring free decks that then can defeat Druid? Then you would. If you're not playing Druid, then you need to play Tempo Mage. I think like something like Tempo Mage, so um, like uh, maybe Patron, deck. maybe um, uh, it's not maybe conquest, Agro Shaman's okay. Right? It's not Conquest. So it's like one deck. You can have one deck and try to snipe the Druid and just defeat it with your one deck. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, You could just bring Tempo Mage and that can be But enough. then if you lose, you're, you're basically dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But yeah, I don't know. I, th I think there's always a route to actually play sort of... Uh, against the meta, uh, as opposed to go along with it and just take, you know, the overall the overall best decks. But with Last Arrow Standing, you know, there is a point to that. And it is actually going to be the Druid Mirror. Yeah, now Wild Grove and Ramp. So, uh, Innervates, Wild Groves, who plays Taurus in first, who has Tempo on board. So basically, it's, it's really simple. Whoever has minions and attacks face will have a big advantage, where the other will have to trade in those minions. But uh, this matchup is not that simple overall. Uh, so, in the very beginning, there will be an advantage on one side, but then mid-game, some trading and some decisions, what can happen, will actually decide the outcome of the game. 
Yeah, I, th I think Moody's definitely got the better opening here. Um, the, the double potential ramp for Dynasty's Aspirin of Wild Growth and even getting something like a Shredder on the board. Because as you said, like well, in the Druid Mirror especially, if you can hold, <laughs> if you can hold the board, then you know you're winning basically you know like you just can just make that as difficult as possible for your opponent with cards like shredder but as a you just get, gave the nod to lothar there's a <laughs> there's a wild growth on powder's side so both these guys are pretty good at druid it seems yeah yep. and uh, one has an innovate and an engine of law and the engine of law is one of the cards that will push one of the players to a huge mar uh, like will push toward the win uh like how does druid deal with it yeah, that's the problem. First of all, you don't have a good way to deal with it because it requires a swipe with a spell power, which is hard to set up in a mirror match, or use of a hero power, which then deals four damage back, and basically five, but it discounted the armor first. But um, in this uh, in this particular matchup, cards like Keeper of the Grove don't have that much value. They they don't hold that much value unless you're silencing a Palter Shredder. But sometimes it's even better to just deal the damage yeah so uh having cards like emperor and wild growth innovate it's just a oh, wild growth Se innovate wild growth now nah, coin second, <laughs> second wild growth probably <laughs> yeah that, that's sometimes you just do that like life which did in the g2 class legends tournament and just was curing out every single turn basically when you think about it you change the wild growth into a permanent innovate every single turn and that actually might be the case this turn but what let's say innovate wild growth you have four mana next time you have five mana you coin out emperor you have a six mana engine of law and that's actually a very good play so i'm sure that powder will come and do this yeah and this is this is especially important i know uh, you know everyone sort of jokes about oh well drew just ramp some wins but in the mirror when the deck is built to ramp and win, when you ramp harder than your opponent, it's even more swingy just because you get yep. so far ahead, like you said, Lothar. So Moody's, um, you know, probably thinks he's okay because the Druid's at least only on three cards, one of which is a coin. But having that Ancient of Law just to draw the additional two is going to really make the difference. Yeah, yep. but now um, he'll probably go for Pilot Shredder. Uh, it's not really contested on board, and even if it is, uh, there, there will need to be the hero power. Keeper of the Grove will not be able to kill it. Well, ki it can be ki uh, killed, but then th we have a drop. But still, that so might actually harder. go for the Danrasus because he's worrying about Savage Roar. It's not a huge factor, and it would still would go for the Parthish Shredder. But if when you think about it, Savage Roar is a threat this turn because one of the one ones will be traded with the Parthish Shredder, and then the two attack the Grove probably will have a huge chance to kill the drop from it, right? And then. Oh uh, my god. He built from that point, but yeah. D Doctor, Doctor <laughs> Bolt. Bolt. He yes. Was, he was forced <laughs> to play the Thorison, and I was. I wonder, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, Such well, a problem, right? Thorison on five. Sorry. Thorison on five mana, not turn five. Yeah. Uh, into a six mana Engine of Law was good enough, but six mana Doctor Boom into Engine of Law when you can draw a. What, uh, living Roots, an example, will be just devastating. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants, and that Dr. Boom was also so important. That would be an innervate that would well, actually, he actually used the Apple innervate, but uh, he could have uh, got many worse drops on that uh, on that one. And now Moody doesn't even have a great way to deal with the story, son. Yeah, well, he can he can trade in and then swipe face. Um, which probably feels like the best. And and you know what? You'd look at that and go, oh, brilliant! I've cleared the board, and I. Wow, oh. I'm, and I have a four-four out of the shredder, so that's always good. But even so, he's like continually like he's lost the initiative now, and I think that's the issue because then boom comes down, and then there's got to be bigger answers to boom and so on, so on. So the four-four though definitely helps. So he goes for the board. He recognizes the fact that he is actually in trouble here, and he needs. Oh, there was this innervate, so he used double wild group one innervate, and yep. now he's getting the second innervate. Yeah, powder can draw that ramp. Well, it's awesome with the Ancient of Law. But there's Mind Control Tech! So right, okay, guys. Is he taking the 7-7? Seven, seven? He has a 1 in 4, right? Because he's probably going to kill off one of the 1-1s one -ones first. Yeah. Yes. So, kill one of the 1-1s one -ones with, with what? With Shapeshift? Uh, I think... Hmm. Then steal Dr. Boom and swing the game around? Potent he could potentially play the Aspirant as well, just to put a minion on the board. Well, he can, but uh, not necessarily now. Yeah, it's just c he could use like the two four to run into the one one. He can also two like sub if he doesn't steal Doctor Boom, he can savage roar maybe and and try to kill it. 
Well, this is the moment of proof. Okay, and it's not like a bomb. No. Oh. But it's still the better outcome, yeah. right? I, it's still a bomb. With the Savage Ward in hand, is actually a big threat. Unless there will be a swipe next to yeah, Probably but won't. he still needs to uh, kill both the bomb and the one one, I believe, oh, no. because of a passable Savjur. So you, you know your opponent only has two cards in hand. Those are amazing cards, but you hope those are not Ancient of War and Invade. Uh, but it, it can be Savjur, so you want to play around that and not get m more damage. Yeah, he's training for Dr. Bomb, that sort of thing that I was thinking about. Okay. Yeah, what this does is like, it's nothing flashy, but this just removes by far the biggest threat on the board. And, you know, what. Oh. <laughs> Swap is good. <laughs> I was gonna say what Moody would be thinking is that you know he is you know he is low on cards, so surely he's got to run out of juice at some point. But we can see that with the Ancient of Law, the Swipe, and the Innovate Powder, can probably just do what he wants at this moment in time. Yeah, Don't but he's going for the Ancient of Law Don't anyway. Yeah, I like that. I prefer the Ancient of Law. Well, I think. it all depends on the outcome of the bomb of your bomb. If that bomb would have killed a minion, that would be awesome. It's just a problem that the innervate, mm -hmm. like this, you would have probably use would like to use that innervate with uh, conjunction at the draw um, to the ancient of law. Fortune for him, he did get that trap right. But most likely you had more options next time with the ancient of yeah. law to play it with with something else. And well, ancient of law is a five five minion basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're giving out the the initiative to your opponent, right? And it's in seven. He can play in his own ancient of law. So he would, he had to take that into consideration. Yeah, I think the benefit here for Powder is that if you look at the health totals, Powder's still not been damaged this uh, this game, or at least not been damaged past 30. Uh, Mood is on 16, so he's two damage off, just a flat combo, killing him. Uh, so every single turn now, you're in that point versus Druid where you have to think, I need to clear the board or I'm going to die. And if you don't or can't clear the board, then you just have to accept that and then see how you can try and win. Well, the problem is, like, even with all the combo at the moment, right? There is uh, something like Druid of the Claw of Savager or there are swipes. Oh, yeah, there's, that's what I mean. Like, especially with a minion already on board, there's so much potential damage going forward that, um, that you know, he, he could just drop any turn at this point. Yeah, but uh, Moody has to make the decision there, and uh, if he just goes for the chicken game, he will die eventually, because Powder will just draw into those cards. So this was probably his last chance to play something good on board and have a chance to to maybe take this game back. But as, as we can see, it would be super hard. Yeah, I, I like this play as well. Just clear the board. There's nothing crazy going to come out, and just pretty much just rely on this 5-5. Like, now his opponent's on 10. You know, he can double Druid of the Claw, like, you know, in a turn or so, just to finish him off if this 5-5 gets dealt with this turn. All right, so back to Moody, where he's still in trouble. What can he do here to, to clear? Well, it looks like you have to develop the board at the same time. So swipe Living Roots at Denas's Aspirant seems like a viable option, because you need something on board. And if you don't kill that 5-5, well, then you're probably dead anyway. So right? probably yeah. Keeper and Swipe will be better. It's like a two four, a bit bigger than a two three. It's not a bit. It's it's probably not a difference at all because you will use that minion with the two HP to trade in anyway because you don't have an option to uh, let anything live any time uh, of the, uh, in the game. So you will sacrifice that analysis, but you will gain one mana next turn. And you're not spending living roots, but uh, yeah, I guess it's black both for fine. Yeah, and especially at this point, there's not a lot that uh, Powder's probably going to do to kill a 2-3, you know, wh mm -hmm. when he's sat on, on 26, so the odds of him gaining that extra mana are pretty high. Sylvanas not bad. I'm just struggling past just double Druid of the Claw. No, you can do it <laughs> next turn. I again. know you can do it next turn, but I want to do it this turn, Nymph. <laughs> there's not enough mana. Oh, that's true. He's on 9. Oh, I was thinking of the Dionysus on the other side of the board. Oh, okay, okay, I'll okay. take it all back, guys. I'm sorry. No worries, man. Just throw them at the face yeah. of the opponent. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. So can we do anything here? Uh, silence Sylvanas and then... No, actually, I think correct play is low tap and Druid of the Claw and go face for two damage. A lot of Druid of the Claw and just attack? Yes. What about swipe, sil swipe Sylvanas, attack into Sylvanas with the 2-3 and play off of? Well, that would be correct if he wouldn't have the Druid of the Claw in this end. I think in this situation... Um, there's no easy way of for powder to kill off the Sylvanas, 
and you can stop the attack and that's the play to win yeah and you can also um like always keep at the grove and swipe next turn yeah which then finishes off the sylvanas quite cleanly and you know keeps your board intact all right exactly. that sounds really good oh he's trading kind of playing scared but i don't blame him well he seen one wrath uh one living roots in the very beginning or was it the previous game the living roots the previous game those three living roots this game no living roots To be honest, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> there have been a couple of li living roots here overall. Yeah, Two but living just he's just playing safe. Three, Double root of the toss. Good drop. Black Knight top deck. That was a thing a year ago. <laughs> no, well, more than a year ago, but it was so feared. Like, do I play that Druid of the Claw in <laughs> the taunt mode? Would you be surprised if somebody actually brought it to the last Hero Standing Tournament with uh, so many Druids? Like, you were really? not surprised that people brought Druid. Maybe yeah. they should actually I mean, bring Black I think, Knight. Yeah, I think the problem with that is is uh, something I was thinking about the other the other day actually. Um, the issue is there aren't enough other decks that play significant taunts that are swingy enough in the matchups. Whereas yeah, in Druid, obviously it's fantastic because they're normally playing one to two minions. But all the other decks, like there's normally so many minions on the board anyway that, that you know killing the one off doesn't make too much of an impact. Yeah. Sylvanas is also not that popular in Druids anymore. Like we saw Sylvanas, but like some people cut it actually and play something else. Yeah. That's true. The problem that I uh, just wanted to go back for f to the Black Knight, for now it's not being played because the Belchers are still like the top yep. taunter uh, in almost every single deck and Black Knight is not ad as effective against it. But let's just reevaluate that after a month, I guess, because when standard uh, will will be played as the um, D to go format for competitive tournaments, uh, then the Black Knight might actually be a really good card. Yeah, it might come back. It's really hard to kill the Black Knight. I'm not really peculiar. I mean, I'm really curious about his his uh, thought process in this in this situation because you can put out the Palter Twitter, do the damage, you still have the option with with the Savage for next turn. But he used to draw of the claw, so yeah, he has no more charge. Yeah, minutes. I was gonna say, I think because it was already in taunt, um, he decided to sort of cash in that damage now, uh, because otherwise you'd just have to run the druid of the claw into the two health druid of the claw. Mm -hmm, but so I, I think that was okay. But this gives so much time for Moody to develop the board. That actually, if Powder misses the draw, maybe with the Doctor Boom, Moody can still take it if he gets something like a Savage Roar next turn. Like this turn is Doctor Boom innervate hero power. Yeah, because you need to stack up that armor to get out of range of swipe, swipe next turn. Well, Force of nature is still. I think um, I think for the full health, like you uh, you can still die to some stuff. Obviously, you've seen both Druids at the claw. But also, you don't die to just straight up Savage Draw Hero Power, which is, I think, the scariest oh, one on, on three. Hands. Shade, Shade is blank, so Moody, can Moody just win with the Savage Draw? How much damage would it be? He can kill one of the bombs, get some damage, and then there's 12. 16. I don't think you kill one of the bombs, you just kill the Lotep. Kill the Lotep, and then you take 5, you're at 15, and then you have 11, 12 damage. Something like... Yeah, so now Moody actually has a chance to win this. That would be a sick comeback. Actually, might not even make sense to kill the load. Nine. Because you have nine, eleven damage on board. You will be at six. I think you die to a four, uh, <laughs> Savage Roar anyway, right? Basically, a four damage. For, for, so Savage Roar is lethal anyway. Force of Nature is lethal anyway. Druid of a Claw is lethal. Um, Swipe is lethal. Wrath gives you a chance. Well, uh, this is awesome. You this can is yeah. also because you can kill Wrath the shade. Kill Possibly. Kill, kill the boom bot your own and deal damage that might just stack up to lethal, right? Because you have no. Yes, because you need four. You yeah. if you hit face for four, you win. If you kill the shade, you're good. Oh. And a oh, wow. of nature is enough. Drawn. That's oh my god, that's enough. And, and he hit the four. four. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even oh, need to wow. show the force. I, I think not playing the palter shredder was a really weird decision by Powder. Like, look at that minion still in his hand, right? That was a, the board was looking not maybe promising for the pilot shredder anyway. But if you don't use that pilot shredder at that point, the minion is practically useless for the last, uh, for the whole game, because you will not cash in it uh, on its value when your opponent already has the board. He can trade yeah, and, and the thing is as well, the Savage Raw was still in, in hand, so he wouldn't have used the Savage Raw. And 
the odds on your opponent actually trading into the shredder multiple times with mm -hmm. the board that they had to actually kill it off were, give you more were, time. were either A, good for you because he has to trade in so many times it's awkward, yep. or the shredder's still alive and then you can savage draw and maybe you know you draw like swipe next turn or something like that to, to push for even but more still, damage. What a game. Like Powder was uh, had a start of double Wiregrove, double Innervate, Ancient of Lore into Thorison, or Thorison into Ancient of Lore into Dr. Boom. And he had almost everything. He got Moody to three points of health, and Moody was still able to come back. <sighs> really really <laughs> well played. Kind of crazy. If you didn't know Moody before, definitely a player to watch and uh, see how he behaves in this tough situation here at the Tavern Tales. Yep, so another okay. I say okay opening because there's wild growth there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the the rest of the minions don't really matter because they're all going to get thrown away more than likely. Poor minions, so, come on. <laughs> so an okay opening for Moody, mainly because that wild growth. Uh, Powder's got a really strange one as well. Interesting, he's playing the owl. That's be probably becoming a bit more and more common in uh, in secret paladin. How many times have you casted and uh, we're saying that if paladin draws an owl right now? Yeah, because they, they, all their damage comes from minions, right? So taunts can cause so many issues, especially taunts like Belcher, which uh, you know allow for uh, not great trading whatsoever, but double wild growth. So this time Moody. Moody has the double wild growth. Before yeah. it was Powder, this time Moody. Someone always has the wild growth. But overall, I think this is a great hand for Moody. So v versus Paladin, when you play, it's overall a bad matchup for you. But if you get a wild growth into Shredder, into a swipe, answering possible Master for Battle, and then you can maybe even coin Ancient of Lore a bit earlier, that's great for you. Yeah, Moody's definitely got all the options here. Um, just working out, is there a point to coin Wild Growth? Probably not, right? Uh, like how he's bluffing with uh, dragging the cards randomly. This is, this is a cool thing that uh, I used to do a lot. As, uh, actually, in Bucharest against Gara, and that won me the game <laughs> when we pl played a warrior against Shaman. And I didn't have a card for first five turns, and I just dragged randomly cards to just. You're play. right. Gara didn't do anything because he was afraid you actually have like everything in your hand, yeah. and then you were just keeping them because you don't want to play them, and you didn't legitimately have to have. Yeah, and I was roping every single turn. <laughs> <laughs> Lothar with those mind games. <laughs> yeah, it, it literally, Gara. If he would just play cards, he would win that because <laughs> he had nothing. <laughs> if he, he would didn't. just play Hearthstone, he would win. Yeah. My cheapest card would have was I think Sylvanas or something like that. Or Shield Maiden. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's <laughs> made, she's made it, actually. Yes, <laughs> yes. Anyway, Wild Grove will accelerate uh, this game by a huge margin. Yeah, it's really good. And then next turn you can coin uh, Shredder or coin Swipe, depends what happens. Yeah, there is you don't need to coin, you have already for mana. Oh, you have for mana even, yeah. There's the Belcher. So, I think the inclusion of Iron Big Owls in, um, in Paladins right now is triggered by the fact that there are so many Freeze Mages. People are playing also Secret Paladins, so the silence makes a uh, huge difference in those Avengers. Kings. In, in, yeah, Blessing of Kings, um, opponents, Tyrion, and uh, that, that, that can be a huge swing. Zoo as well. Like, people play Zoo now. You want to silence the Rubian Egg, you want to silence. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. So good to just remove the egg and um, the potential value from, an example, a um, Imp Gang boss or yep. a Defender of Argus. Because there's the taunt. It's not about the plus one plus one. It's more about the taunt. Just yeah, to and go just, just the, 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 the key cards that make your matchup a lot worse, actually. So in gang boss is something you do want versus Paladin. But this is actually um, not the most straightforward turn. Like the Shredder seems okay, but you know those one ones just kill the first half regardless. I like the swipe. Um, but it's just an honest swipe, which is one for one uh, with Master for Battle. And I think you just even swipe the face. You do not swipe the spider because you you could pull. Put more power on board. Oh, so yeah. he's gonna go uh, full in. full on clearing this board. Swipe face with That's the uh, coin living root. So completely clear the board off. And this is looking really nice because now you want the board as empty as possible coming up to turn six. Because yeah. Mysterious Challenge is a very powerful card when it's played, even on its own. But when it's played, mm. speaking of which, um, when it's played with minions on the board alongside it, it's incredibly powerful because then the Avenge can go on the smaller minions and spread the power around. So something like BGH doesn't just lock it down instantly, which is something Druid's uh, pretty good at, actually. Yeah, absolutely. But then um, even so, Powder missed the turn four. Four. So on turn five, Belcher is great. Mysterious Challenger is obviously amazing, especially if you have it hidden behind the Belcher with all, all the l redemptions. Like, we don't know exactly how many secrets uh, Powder is playing in his Paladin. Sometimes people play less, like they don't play Redemption and they don't play Repentance. But if he plays them, uh, that would be a great setup. But now this is uh, Moody getting initiative back. 
Yeah, this is kind of, um, again, just another slight interesting turn because Drake seems just super obvious and you just drop it down, five drop, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cycles, really good. But then that secret keeper is always scary because if, just if, the Paladin has a few secrets in hand, um, I suppose with one mana spare, actually, the, the, the Paladin <laughs> left, you can actually leave it, but... That was perfect. Do you, uh, yeah, you go, you for, go it. for it. You do raft that uh, secret keeper for two, draw a card. It's basically, y y when you think about the Rav, it's a cycle for two mana, good enough. You did cycle with the uh, with the Drake anyway, and the Rav is dealing more than two damage. Yeah. Because the secrets would have been buffing the secret keeper for a lot more. So it's dealing between two to basically four, I would say, usually. And that's a hu huge, huge... Um, swing yeah and this shows the power of secret keeper in this deck like it was a one two it wasn't even buffed once but it could be like and that's the problem and you can't definitely can't leave that card just lying around because the second you ignore it on the board thinking it's just insignificant is the second you're like the, the paladin then stacks like three secrets and suddenly it's a big problem we've seen those six seven secret keepers with divine shield before yeah they're much harder to deal with than the one two it just reminds me of the horror of playing against undertaker <laughs> Oh they, my they god, Undertaken, Hunted, Creeper, and been an egg into whatever. <laughs> yeah. like into it doesn't matter anymore, the game's over. It can yeah. be even worse sometimes because those secrets are still there and they are still threatening. Well, it's like if you play um, Secret Keeper and Noble Sacrifice Avenge, you can't attack into it because it'll hit the Noble Sacrifice. <laughs> then the Secret Keeper gets bigger and it just things just start getting really problematic. And hmm. Well, here, can you can you Wrath? Can you start with Wrath? I guess yeah. you do. I mean, you, you can draw a swipe, it's not really that important, but you probably want to develop the Palace Shredder here anyway. Because your opponent will have to use the uh, one attack minion or the weapon itself, I guess, in using that one HP minion to just soak for attack would be fine. But it all depends what kind of secrets does he have right now. Yeah, but even so, this is a really good turn for Powder. Ooh, the uh, full tree. He does okay. have the full tree, but with the 1-1 one, one and the 1-2 as Taunt, even the Druid Hero power, which is normally really useful for proccing the Noble Sacrifice, isn't going to do much because it has to go through Noble Sacrifice. Then the Avenge could go anywhere at this point, and there's still a Taunt to get through as well. So Powder's positioned himself really well here, and the Mysterious Challenger doing his job on turn 6. But I think the Sludge Belcher on turn 5 as well, and not being able to be dealt with had, has had a huge impact on the way yeah, this world looks like. It. So now, f uh, as Moody, you know there is Repentance. You might still... It might be an eye for an eye. And don't <laughs> laugh. I was playing it on ladder. It was, it was winning me games for against freeze mages. Really? Yeah. Instead for those of, pyro finishes? For pyros, for yeah. fireballs, for even pinks. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> really? Nice. No say sacred trials? Yeah, I was trying it out instead of eye, of an eye for an eye just to see how it works, but it sucks. So, <laughs> people Eye for an Eye is actually better than Sacred Trials. Yeah, people naturally pl play around not having four minions on board. And now, 7-7, seven, 2-2, seven, two, two, and 2-3. Two, uh, it's still it's a good follow-up. Like, you can just play Belcher with uh, Shielded or just go even with the Knife Juggler. Yeah, I think I actually... Mm, mm. I'd probably want to look at putting the 7-7 seven, seven into the Drake um, and then just going Knife Juggler Belcher to try and snipe the 2-1. And then just pressure because it's still generate the noble sacrifice hasn't been procced yet, right? Uh, no, no, he, he no, hasn't attacked. Yeah, so it still pressures the druid into potentially uh, at attacking with his hero power and using two mana uh, of his turn. Going for face should not be that terrible as well because you do put a lot of pressure here and you do demand the big hunter. If there's no big hunter, druid has no way to remove that seven seven. And the juggle comes face. Okay. And still, Noble, Avenge are active, and uh, they are there somewhere. Wait, 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 there's Noble Sacrifice and Redemption, right? Yep. So opponent yep. will have four minions. Yes, you can use Mind Control Tech. So the Mind Control Tech draw was actually a huge thing. It's actually amazing, yeah. And he, if he doesn't steal the 7-7, seven, seven, he can still kill it with Big Game Hunter. So and maybe steal Belcher with Avenge. <gasps> <laughs> Here we and go. You can steal Knife Juggle for the one potential damage. Yep. Wow. Let's do it. But well, I was lucky. It could have been killed, right? <laughs> Guys, we are going to witness oh. something amazing. If he steals it, like, he can still... He, it's fine. Either steal it or kill it. Steel Belcher is still probably better. Takes the extra damage. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it stops as he probably wants to put this on the other side of the shredder. Oh, get, yeah. Before Twitch chat explodes, he's going to get that at least oh, minion placement lucky. correct. And now, well, one more, one more, because it dies. Yeah. And it now dies. Doomsayer. After all this. Well, that was okay, but it's, uh, I'm guessing that um, Moody in this situation would most likely want to see a damage on the 2 1 instead of the Belcher instead. Because you. you can take additional one additional damage to kill the Belcher, but you want your opponent to have the at least min uh, least amount of minions, yeah. um, least number of minions on board as as possible. I think that was still a very good turn, and uh, there is a Tyrion for Powder, but if there is a Keeper, he might find himself another great spot. But if there is no Keeper though, well, no even keeper. the fact that he can actually kill off the Tyrion and then play, uh, he can kill the Tyrion, right? He, he can. He yeah. can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 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 play Boom as well. Like he's he's quite low on health though. Actually, I didn't really realize Moody was only on thirteen yeah, health. Yeah, but still that's kinda, okay kinda position, I think, because if there is the Ashbringer, it will be six damage with the with the minion on board. And if there is Blessing of Kings, that's ten, so you're still alive. Yeah, you need to deal deal um, additional damage, and that's only happening with a consecration, double consecration. Blessing of Kings and Seal of Champions, which is not seeing play right now. So that's Consecration a doesn't as well. Like people play one uh, one consecration sometimes in Secret Paladins. It's mostly double blessing of kings. Passable true silver, which people started cutting as well because Ooh. they they play Coghammer instead. Master for battle being one. So there's again not much first paladin. Is he weighing up leaving Terrian alive? No, no, you can't. You, you need to kill it right away because first of all, it's one less damage to your face. Yep. And uh, and you have Druid of the Claw next turn. But you might get the Keeper. Uh, if you get the Keeper next turn, th that's why probably he was thinking yeah. about it. Feels super risky though, because if he doesn't, he just loses, I think. Well, he still has ways to counter the Ashbringer that with the Ancient of Lore healing for five will give him <laughs> one more turn. Look at that. The Blessing of Kings would be just four damage to the face, yeah. because it requires a stick that it, ha that it has to be attached to him, right? So uh, it was very important to kill all the minions on board. And now it's again very important. Oh, he's going for yeah, the yeah. I like that. There was no keeper last turn, yeah. right? So what what are your opponent gonna uh, is gonna do about it? Top the keeper. Yeah, and, and and it also makes it so much lower. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I told you. Um, well, there was no <laughs> keeper, right? So it has to come at some point. It also makes the uh, or would have made the boom bots less likely, like way less likely to be able to clear it up and uh, force the doctor boom to trade, but. <laughs> I guess if you can draw a keeper yeah. the Grove, that's pretty reasonable. Powder is like, seriously? Well, this is pretty crazy. Well, the Boombots, if they don't kill, probably doesn't matter yet. But if there is a second Blessing of Kings, maybe, maybe? Well, there's the Druid of the Clone, right? Okay, there will be. Uh, but there is a Silence. So if you get, if one minion survives, if there is a second Blessing of Kings, that should be it. Uh, I'm, Unless I'm almost sure that Moody, after seeing the outcome of the bomb, will consider the Druid of the Claw in charge, just to play around the buffs. So, 7 damage to the face, Druid of the Claw in charge mode, because you know that your opponent has no way. But do you play around the owl, or do you want to uh, stop the 5 attack weapon that is staring at you? Well, the thing is here, you sell lethal for the following turn, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I like the, the Druid of the Claw charge play to clear the board and then attack face with Boom and Hero. Uh, it can't Hero Power. With the Boom? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, killing the minions is fine as well because you have Ancient of War. So you go for the longer game right now. Paladin, it will not burst you from just nothing, just a weapon. Um, so he's going for the safer play. But. Uh, wait, wait, who's going for the safer play? I think Moody with but killing it, all the minions. But without the top deck, you would have not won. If you wouldn't attack, like. Without the charge minion, right? The seven damage to the face right now would have mattered a lot, because he w your opponent would have been at twelve. He would just be dead, right? And he would just dead. Yeah, regardless of top deck. Yeah. Of the top yeah, deck. yeah. So the druid of the claw in charge, tra you could trade into the minion, go face with boom, and then the paladin has to do something to it, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Stop it. So playing the druid of the claw in charge mode, even though it, it's clearing a minion, is action is acting as a taunt minion as well, because that minion would have been the target of the taunt, right? So that's the same outcome, but you save... Um, sorry, you're not saving. You're actually uh, dealing more damage because of that, because your boom Because boom can attack, yeah. Your boom can attack, it deals 7 damage to the phase, your opponent is at 12, and then you have 7, 4, and 2 damage on from the minions next turn, and then 1 HP attack uh, from your hero How power, much right? health did, did he have after that? 8? 
Yeah, eight, but your 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 opponent is a paladin. It has well, yeah, and there's yeah. no minions there's on no board, minion right? On board, so. And he only has a weapon, which is five damage. Consecration is not lethal. Uh, I have no idea which draw could have been helpful in this yeah, situation. Yeah, I, I do agree with you guys, because if you look at paladin card, But th there was one card in hand. But that was that was a silence. What was the I absolutely worst combination of cards a paladin can have to kill you to deal Argent, three damage Argent, Horse Rider... Blessing of Kings. No, no way. No, <laughs> you, you know by this time that what the deck this is. Yeah, right? I don't so think there was any card that could yeah. actually win him the game that following yeah, turn. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The only so thing is, like, would maybe like a second Belcher would have second Belcher being. But that would have happened regardless, right? And you still like, have that that's Lord. still yeah. the same issue. Yeah. So regardless of what played yeah, it. Yeah, and you still have Ancient of Lord to heal yourself back and escape yeah. the wrench again. So I do agree with that. Uh, key attacking with uh, Druid of the Claw was uh, yeah. a bit better there. I think a lot of pressure on these guys as well, though. So uh, I th normally when you you know you're a bit tense in a match, you do want to just feel like you want to just play safe and be like, he yeah. has a big weapon. I'm going to play a taunt, you know, like... But this is like something that Crane was talking about uh, with us, right? Yeah. No one plays perfect Hearthstone, but those small decisions that are mattering a lot, because when you when someone just watches the game, right? Just like, yeah, okay, you play the taunt, sure, it's fine. It's a good decision, you can go for yeah. it. But when you start analyzing the whole matchup in general, the, the biggest thing that you have to keep in mind when you play Hearthstone is how do I win or how do I lose? And when you analyze the cards in your deck, in your opponent's deck, and you know most in most situations what type of archetype uh, is your opponent playing, you know the outs. And you can play accordingly to that, so you have the risk management, which is the most valuable skill in house in general. And you skew the win ratio in your favor by doing the proper risk assessment. Yeah, every single time yes. you make a play like that, you're pushing yeah. it further towards and that you. That is like separating good players from outstanding players. Yeah, that's actually that's what making the difference where people win tournaments and some people only make top eights. Because if you cannot yeah. risk, you will always like maybe with your consistent plays you will make it to top eight, but you will not be able to take the tournament because you will be losing somewhere uh, playing a bit safer. And those people who are able to make those risks, as Lothar is saying, they are consistently well consistently enough winning the tournaments. They yeah. are. At least winning the tournaments. And then there are players who are always second. Lothar knows something about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting Forced burned. laughter I'm incoming. I, 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 I'm getting burned here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, first so time we see a druid without Wild Grove or anything. <laughs> Is this even a druid, guys? We don't know. It's so strange. What was the Warlock deck, actually? But the Warlock deck's really interesting. It's actually um, Reno Lock. Okay. Um, and he, he also played Alex Straza as well, so I can't help but uh, think this is a much more sort of popular combo. Uh, yeah, the Leroy, Lark, the Leroy yeah. one. Either Leroy or Arcane Golem, you know, one or the other. But um, but yeah, they're really interesting. Again, we sort of half joked about, oh, it's going to be like 100% Zoo decks and stuff. But we can see now that other players, uh, you know, bringing something a little bit different. And um, I know, for example, Hoy. Uh, played has played Reno Lock to like rank one or two legend at, at the moment. I think he's like one one of those two ranks. Uh, so you know the deck that must still be pretty okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I think Reno Lock is great, and um, but it has uh, some weak matchups as well. For example, Druid is okay versus it. I believe it's mostly because of the burst combo. So as a Druid, you have combo which can deal more damage than the Warlock can heal. Like, even if you have a Reno, you get back to 30, and Druid is like, sure, I just deal 5, I just deal maybe 4 again, and then I have you in combo range. Yeah, I think the um, the biggest challenge for the Warlock in some of the harder matchups is you have to get that big board clear off. Um, it, whether it be a big Shadow Flame, we can see the Twisted Nether, you just have to empty the board, because once it's empty, you can keep on top of it. But the issue Reno Lock normally has is when decks build up a board early on, you, forced into, you play Reno on 6, but that's all you can play, and then they just hit you again with all their minions to, to then push you back down to that low health you were on before you played Reno and, and then just snowball from there. So I just think getting the AoE and keeping the board clear is going to be super important, especially if Powder's playing the combo, which means he can, you know, he can then just Alex Straza and then burst down, which the Druid doesn't normally have too many answers to that sort of damage. What's really important is the fact that Moody is going to shapeshift on turn three and probably shapeshift on turn four. Sucks, yep. right? But, <laughs> <It's the force. laughs> but this is the prize for for playing Druid. Druid. Yeah. Is, this, is this what people deserve? <laughs> it's like Sometimes you just have to get those draws <laughs> because you just had like two really good opening hands with yeah. the Wild Innovates, so the chances are your third game with the Druid will probably suck. Is, is it Lothar's <laughs> curse? 
Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Loth has cursed all druid players. I, I'm, I still remember the burn I got from the druid three times in a row in Stun Sivka's Bucharest against in semifinals. And that's that's when you that. started disliking druid. I just think it's and it all Never mind. Let's, let, let's, let's stop the rant about the droid. <laughs> but um, in general, Rin Jackson is a really tricky matchup against droids, right? Because it feels like you have the weapons that you need to battle, uh, to, to need to battle the droid. You have port clears, you have shadow flame, which is awesome, right? When Single you, removal like siphon so. Yeah, you have dark bombs against pilot shredders, down as aspirant. Uh, sorry, dark bomb. Against the Donasus or the Apalte Shredder, you have Silence, you have multiple minions that usually have a great amount of health. So everything is problematic for the Druid, but Druid can always just kill you with, with the combo, right? Because you deal damage and your opponent is limited to certain cards that heal himself, right? So there's one Farce here, one Healbot. And one Rear Jackson Warlock and Alex Straza, but Alex Straza is not really that helpful yeah. in most yeah. situations. The thing is, the thing is, like combo. When you say combo, you think 14 points of damage, but then like Renalock will not kill you before turn nine most of the times. Like Renalock has its own combo for 10 mana, and if Drill has two minions on board with four attack each, suddenly combo is 26 and not only 14. Yeah, of course, and uh, it's something where the Warlock 100% needs to be able to just keep that board clear. And something you were saying, Lothar, about the AOE. They do have the perfect answers, but because uh, one of the things they struggle with versus Druid is you say, oh, well, Warlock runs four big AoEs, right? So there's Demon Wrath, Hellfire, Shadow Flame, and a twist in there, potentially. Yeah. Um, the issue is normally you say, oh, well, I'm only running one of each card, but I run four AoEs, so it's fine. Well, but Hellfire and Demon Wrath doesn't really do much <laughs> against Druid, whereas a lot of other decks, like, say, Paladin, you draw one of the AoEs and you're pretty happy, but yeah. you're really reliant on the Shadow Flame and getting to a, a good twist in Nether where you don't lose too much initiative by clearing the board. Or you just rely on minions that are already on board, or yeah. Immortal Core yeah. as a, let's say, subpar um, spell power. Yeah, right, because that's how it works. So far, it's uh, going good for Powder uh, because Moody had this uh, really slow start. He was lucky to get the top four, uh, the turn four pilot to Shredder, but Moody is the one dictating tempo, and uh, he's also running Sylvanas, which is overall pretty good versus Druid, especially <laughs> with cards like Demon Wrath that can yeah. kill it as well. I I'm really curious about this turn because it feels like developing the Belcher is an awesome thing about uh, against the Druid, right? But then the other option was to tap and play Sunfear Protector. Develop the board with two minions that have four attack, so they kill most of the minions or help you kill uh, most of the minions, especially when you want to use the Demon Wrath at some point. Right? There was the 4 6 3 uh, of the cloud. Yeah, but that was used with the PO. He, he was clearing that anyway. But the fact, the, 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 the thing is, he could have played the Emperor next turn with one more card draw, and he will not sacrifice a huge minion to, to trade with, yeah. with op opponent's drops, right? Yeah, it's definitely a tough one. I think, again, it's just getting to the point where it's just I will do anything to clear the minion and represent the most power myself. So mm -hmm. I think the Belcher is okay, but it also always feels kind of weird to play Belcher on empty board because it's suddenly sort of just like a 3-5. It's, it's not a huge threat to your opponent. Yeah, and that's what I mean, yeah. And usually you want to use the... Uh, I mean, per in, perfect, in a perfect world, you want to use the menu roof taunt after you put the minions without taunt or immediate effect on the board first, because then you get the most value out of them, right? Because you can attack with the minions that have to wait one turn. Taunt is like something like a reverse charge, right? Because it has effect on the board, but it doesn't deal damage in the same turn. Yeah. But it affect it's affecting the board. Yeah, so he's definitely going for the board-centric approach. Um, now Modi in an awkward spot where he wants to remove Thorison. But then he didn't. Uh, yeah, well, he actually can cast that Wild Growth because without that Wild Growth, he didn't have much. Going for Force instead, keeping that Swipe as a, a possible direct damage. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm I think Swipe Hero Power is just fair because Force of Nature is way more flexible um, in terms of potential combos later on, whereas Swipe. There's not a lot of minions, as we said earlier, because the minions are so big in Warlock. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of minions where, like, Swipe clears the board, whereas he could have cleared that pretty easily and just uh, hit Hero Power there. So that was an interesting, interesting. one. Yeah, that, that was really interesting. Why did he use the Force of Nature instead of the Swipe? 
Pyle just placed himself every single turn in such a good position. He's, he's representing the board that the Druid has to deal with. And as we saw then, dealing with that board took all his mana. So he's not playing any minions. And then he's just doing it again because Sylvanas kind of needs to be dealt with whilst leaving no minions on the board or you fall behind. So there's even a chance we might see, say, Druid of the Claw living roots on, onto Sylvanas well, to clear it off. You can still swipe with living roots and play. Uh, oh, that's Shredder. true. Yeah, so, yeah. so there are good ways to deal with Sylvanas. But yeah, I do agree with you that Powder, every turn he actually has a good minion starting from the Belcher into Taurus and into Sylvanas. He still has Lothab and Alexstrasza. Well, actually, Alexstrasza next turn will have enough mana to do it. All right, so now uh, a couple of options here. Um, oh, he's just going for instance of lore. Interesting. Uh, because he wants Sylvanas to trade into it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you just play boom as well boom, and go yes. for it now? <laughs> Please go boom. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> that obvious, really bad. But uh, it's, Shapes really your face. it's really interesting that could have used. Um, he really likes this swipe. Yeah, this is my my analysis really of the situation. Baffled, <laughs> baffled by this. Situation. He's appreciating a three mana swipe. If There's I, nothing wrong with that. If I really think about it, swipe would be useful if he has like if Powder has a taunt, but like Molten Giant with the taunt. So swipe is this burst card you use after combo to finish the game, but. I don't know. Oh, maybe he's just keeping it for implosion. So he is thinking about implosion that we see in her. You can't really play against implosion in the Rune of Jackson Warlock. Because your opponent is playing one implosion. So what are the chances? And as as Raven said before, force of nature is such a force to be reckoned with, right? Because it, it's so flexible. It can tra trade with minions, play around Sylvanas because you leave minions that are being dead. Uh, at the end of the turn. And it's pretty stolen. good with Savage Roar. It's pretty damn good with Savage <laughs> Roar. They might even finish the game at some point. So losing one of the potential win conditions just to keep a three mana swipe in his hand seems like a kind of poor decision to me. Yeah, see, it's, it's definitely an interesting one. Um, and this is, I, I really like this play from Powder again though, it's just guarding the Sylvanas because the reason for the Ancient of Law last turn was, well Sylvanas just trades trade, directly right? yeah. and then nothing happens, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas now he's like, well, yep, yeah, you can kill Lothab, but then Sylvanas is still on the board, so whatever you play this turn, if you can't kill Sylvanas, you definitely have to play something that isn't too risky, which again, just further allows Powder, it's these little plays like you said, further allows Powder to just edge forward a little bit more in the matchup. Wow, he, what? He's still saving the Wide. And he's okay, going for Pilot and Shredder, even though Sylvanas is still on board. So wow. he would need something like a keeper. Th this is really interesting because now you, you are for sure giving your opponent huge ways of swinging board. Look at that. Abuse of Surgeon on Druid of the Claw. You attack Sylvanas into Druid of the Claw. You take Pilot and Shredder. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. That's um, for zero mana. You don't you you don't lose anything. That's a nice play. I like it. You can even coil af after that. Can even you he can even tap after that. Well, why would you coil? There's no point in coiling. Well, if uh, Druid of a Claw is a 6-6, six, six, no. Sylvanas has deals 5 damage into it. Y you coil first. Oh, you coil first? Yeah, so the, so the trade. So you trade. You trade and Wait, you, you, you can you abuse if you the Druid, Druid, of, Druid of the Claw. So it is yes. a 6-6. Six, six. You attack into it with Sylvanas. No, no, no. You first oh, you call coil. first. Okay, yes, so yeah, you call first. Uh, yeah, makes maybe sense. I s sorry, maybe I skipped that in my in yeah, initial sentence. Yeah, but this is obvious because you have you want to have 100%. Uh, this is probably the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's either way. Well, actually, he draws a card, so this is better. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. And after all that, an Alex Trazer. Yeah. Getting 13, and he still has Hellfire to deal some extra damage in defender of. And, and the problem is, like, this is one of those things that are super Double punishing, swipe. where... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, minions first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he sells boom. Um, no, where, where, like, if you leave a card like Sylvanas on the board and can't deal with it, or d choose not to deal with it, then stuff like this can happen. And, and, you know, this is the reason why the card's so powerful when, it, you know, it's represented on the board on its own. Because now that, that there's a Shredder that, you know, Druid struggles to deal with stuff regardless in terms of, like, actually mm -hmm. dealing with minions. The Shredder's even worse, so... Um, this is a, definitely a dire situation and really cool to see like the impact the Alex Strauss has actually had. Like, Forget about its stats being an 8-8 um, yeah. and you know, yeah, okay, it can be BGH or whatever, but forget about all that. It just took the Druid down to so low and Druid's not really known for tons of healing either. You know, I doubt we're going to see a Tree of Life pop up out of nowhere. Um, so this is just huge. Like, such a power play last turn by, uh, by Powder. 
or a powder wow. play. I still think that powder was play. That oh was my powder play. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that pun was nice. A double swipe, go. Um, even leaving roots on the. I was swiping this first. Hey, what? That's um, five damage. He doesn't so have enough to kill Alex Strata well, now. You need to use. Oh man, that absolutely jinxed. Um, what happened? So he basically sh yeah, shape shifted and never attacked. And he didn't play the abuses. Uh, sorry, the wild. Uh, yeah, the yeah. correct the correct play was living roots the shredder, then swipe Alexstrasza, yeah. and then swipe Alexstrasza again. You kill yeah. almost everything. You're done. Uh, we're, you're only left with a maybe even the parrot from the party yeah. shredder <laughs> or the novice engineer or. There was an item big owl, so it w it would die. Yeah, actually, that that's a good point. Yeah, so uh, that was an interesting match, though. Yeah, uh, that was. Um, I, I think like we can tell that we were talking earlier about experience that these players have, mm -hmm. um, in in live events and these type of tournaments, like sort of longer grueling tournaments like Swiss, um, and you know, see, uh, it getting to moody a little bit there as he was just rushing, couldn't quite finish his turn. You think he um, got a, a little bit moody? Very good, Nims. I appreciate that. Right there. Uh, yeah, whereas Powder, you know, a complete veteran of events like this. This is, his, you know, day in, day out for him. But uh, definitely a rough situation for Moody to be in. And some of the plays that turn were definitely uh, definitely not fantastic, I'll say. Yeah, but then, like, Powder had an advantage from the very beginning, I feel, right? Like, Moody missing those one, two, three drops, getting uh, Shredder on four, and Powder uh, pushing advantage from the very beginning. I don't think he had an advantage. He just gave out the initiative. Because that, that, that was the thing. Druid has always an edge over the opponent because of the looming threat of Force of Nature Savage or any opponent has to be defensive or has to be super toned up on board and be aggressive with his own minions. Yeah. So it's either that or the other one. And if you don't pressure your opponent and he's high enough uh, on health just to play around the combo, yeah. then... It's really looking grim for the druid because he has no way, no way of making a comeback, right? He has to use double swipes. He has to use double um, big game hunter and the mind control tech, an example that we actually saw yep. in one game, and that was back breaking because that's the, those are the tools that druid has to use to g take the initiative back on his own side. Yeah, it's kind of crazy as well. We didn't see like anything in form of combo pieces for the warlock. Right, we didn't True. see a faceless or whether it was Leroy or Yo from the Dark Panther. Yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, that one. And we we did see Alex Straza, so uh it just uh just a kind of interesting one there, but Powder's got a pretty good opening here. You know, whenever you can get Twilight D uh, Drake in uh, any sort of control warlock feels good. Um, and it looks like Moody's playing Control War. Yeah, it seems like a Control War with that Brawl and Geddon. But uh, how is that matchup looking out? Like, Well, it depends which Control Warrior it is. Because there's actually a fairly newish list that curves out at 6 for Control Warrior. That just stops at Shield Maiden and True, True Heart. Uh, but plays the Monkey. But this is 7 mm -hmm. drop, so it curves out to 7. Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. It might have Geddon in sometimes. Okay, Nims. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm being blind because I was looking at the Warlock hand as well. Um, yeah, so uh, this looks like more standard. Gotcha. But uh, you did get me. Good job. Well, uh, this is a matchup that we didn't see for like a long time. If that's a um, handle, typical handle. Or maybe it's Reno, Jackson. Not sure yet, right? There's a lot of options. Now, this is Powder's Reno list, right? What the Reno list is the same as we've oh seen yeah, just well now. Last Tale Sunday, yeah, where are you? We're all I think yeah. we're all pretty just confusing each other at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's Moody's Warrior lie. versus Powder's Warlock that we yeah. saw in the last yeah. game. Yeah, but we haven't seen the full combo. We've just uh, we haven't seen any part of the combo actually. But we do have to assume this is a combo handlock, uh, Reno lock, because he has he had Alex Traza. And for Warrior, so the list you were talking about, what was this list like? Curving out to six. Uh, yeah, it just it basically plays uh, Elise, and uh, and then just stops at six with all the armor up, and you just rely on you, and then everything else in the deck is removal. So it's like actually everything similar to something like um, Fatigue Warrior in the way. Yeah, you know what it's really similar to actually, you know, like, more like you know the Control Priest that curves okay. out just at Entomb and then True Heart. It plays really similar. You just you just run removal, all and right. then the and then the uh, Golden Monkey normally finishes the game for you, unless you mean get like two Wilford Fizzle Bangs or something like that. That's kind of rough sometimes. So you probably run double BGH, stuff like that. Like a lot of removal, you actually change into legendary cards with at least... Exactly, yeah. Okay. But this looks like it's going to be a, probably a more standard list with the glance we got to get in there. And again, this is just a, just a strange I matchup. Like, how does this even go? I don't like the armor up, to be honest. Like, you want to cure about. You have a 
Ancient, uh, sorry, uh, Acolyte of Pain on turn 3. Uh, you have a Shield Maiden for the Shield Slam anyway. You, you probably won't deal with a 4 drop with a Shield Slam because either it's out of range because it will be a Drake which will have like 9 HP what or something. What would you do instead of armor Just up? Play the, uh, the, play the weapon. Yeah. It's a great thing against every single minion uh, apart Maybe. from... Well, I think. Uh, you know what? I think this matchup is actually going to fatigue because it's a combo warlock. Uh, like this Reno lock is a combo deck. So uh, as warrior, what I would do, I would armor up as much as possible to um, get into the health threshold that's, that's unkillable. And warlock basically at some point just uh, runs out of op uh, options and only has this uh, 16 damage combo in hand. And I'm like at 30 still with my armor ups. So I think if uh, Moody should play it as a as a fatigue game. But from then the start. you need to control the board and the only thing that can control so the board in your hand choice. is the fear war and, and brawl. And you need to combine those two to have a chance of clearing the board. But was weapon good then? Like if that would be a weapon yeah, right you now? Yeah, you, you save the two mana, you basically have an innervate on the board because the two armor right now doesn't really do much. Yeah, I was going to say, um, it'd be especially because he didn't have a Death Spite in hand. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, well, I don't need the weapon quite yet against Reno. If you so would have Death Spite, then yeah. Then yeah, yeah, it's a bit different. He has drawn into it now, but this is definitely really, really tough for Moody. It's just one of those, he sort of has a lot of answers, but n not to the questions being raised now with that Twilight Drake. So, many so the weapon does get equipped, and uh, he does go in for three there, takes the Drake for four. I imagine... We might see... Oh, it'll be, it should trade with the Acolyte, right? So the Acolyte will probably run in and then the second half Most of the likely. weapon. Uh, it does have the emergency backup of, say, uh, the Death Spite if, like, an ooze comes out of the Reno lock or something. Well, the thing is that Powder st still doesn't know what uh, Warrior deck it is because there was Ooh. an Armor Up and then Acolyte of Pain, Fire War Axe can still be Patroness as far as he knows. I'm quite surprised by that because usually you want to um, just cut the the flow of draws for the warrior, especially that you saw that your opponent is setting up a trade with the Acolyte of Pain and the weapon. So why not just use the Dark Bomb here? Yeah, I, th I think this is okay though, because I think what he's doing is if he... Oh, he's not trading the Acolyte. Okay. So he's relying on the Acolyte trade to kill the Drake, and he could have killed it and left the Drake up, say on one health, or he could have a Shredder alive. Yeah, but so if, y if you leave uh, an empty board for your opponent, you have a 4-4 four -four minion that can be uh, that with the weapon, you force your opponent to either use another slam, or a bash, or just straight oh, destroy his own weapon and re-equip Death Spite, right? And the damage is just stacking up, and you can tap yourself to get another card, so you get value from uh, from the Emperor as well for the next turns, right? So why not just do that? I I'll, I'll just kill the acolyte. I I don't. Uh, I don't know if uh, Powder was <laughs> expecting a bash. <laughs> and look at that, that's actually a perfect scenario now for Moody because he gets the draw from the Acolyte of Pain, two draws. I would just play the Armorsmith here, attack into the Loot Holder, ignore the 4 4 because it's not a problem. Well, would you would you not coin Shield Slam? Yeah, nah. well, she. No, I wouldn't. Co coin Shield Slam is, is taking Why? more easily. The Armorsmith is not that important anyway. If your opponent attacks into the armor smith, you just kill it with the weapon next turn. But you have Shields Maiden with the five damage shield slam in hand with the coin, yeah, which can be a huge deal against an emperor, against a belcher, and against any other threat that will be dropped instantly, right? Because you have a way of dealing with that with that minion already on board with your free attack minion, yeah. your free attack weapon, and anyway. the weapon still equipped, yeah, 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 of course. So the emperor does come down for the powder, just getting a, and this is. Emperor's so good in a deck like Reno Lock. I mean, you normally are in, in you know the best case scenario, have quite a large hand. And just the shear reduction uh, that, that it provides and that the mana efficiency is pretty huge. And now Moody again has to answer this Emperor. He has a, a you know a multitude of ways. Um, it'd be interesting actually whether he just trades everything in and then just gets True Heart down potentially, just to get it down as early as possible. And it's still 6-3 that needs to be answered uh, on an empty board. Isn't, isn't Shield Maiden better? Than True Heart? No, probably True Heart is a bit better, especially. I think if you true. want, it depends on his game plan, doesn't it? If he wants to play like the long game, then definitely you just want to drop True Heart down as early as possible and then just spam armor up. Um, Whoops. Yep. Maybe, <laughs> that, maybe that, was a, that was a little. <laughs> uh, it, it's okay holding on to that, right? Yeah. There, it there didn't cost him bluff. Yeah. It's the bluff. Yeah, I, I 
don't have execute. Um, there are so better execute okay. targets. If you can actually kill this Emperor uh, with uh, with the weapon and the minions, that's fine because there will be Alexstrasza. You know that. There are cards like... Well, Sylvanas is an execute target sometimes. Even Reno being a 4-6 and being annoying. Yeah, just get it off. I mean, that's all the warrior wants to do, really, doesn't it? Just remove everything off the board and outlast the opponent and potentially go into Alexstrasza Grom for a finisher. But, you know, more and more we're seeing more con like control decks really just pushing the control as opposed to really uh, pushing for a finishing. Mm -hmm. Execute th execute Thaddeus. Yeah, that works. Well, as far as he knows, right? <laughs> yep. Another shield slide. Does it change anything right now? You, you have to take advantage of the weapon. So... Well, you don't have this... You have just a car. Hmm. That's a... No, that's an interesting term because there's... That, that I think there are many ways of playing it out. You can either play the weapon, I, and I would favor that, because you want to set up the the, uh, the wound effect uh, to be available at any point of the game. And right? also you have two weapons in hand, right? So you exactly. kind of want to cycle through these. Exactly. You can also get the additional card draw from the slam, right? Because then you you can use that uh, on the belcher and attack with the weapon. So you get the card draw, you get the value from the weapon, your minion doesn't die to the board anymore, so that's actually cool. Yeah, that's probably the best. Um, you don't deal with it too far, but... You draw yeah. Dr. Boom. <laughs> So, so pretty good. Yeah, it that's works. a good <laughs> aid drop. Interesting that's value. A, that's a yoke, hey, he could shield slam as well. <laughs> hmm. For powder, he doesn't have the high impact card. I need like, I feel like he needs to tap more in general. Yeah, I mean, tapping is fine. He has abusive for zero to deal with the shield maiden. And now the question is how to deal with um, the death spite. Front of Argus will be now. That's a good answer. This is that spite. Really like that. Yeah, uh, you know, until he could uh, saw that turn out, you look at Powder's hand and it's very much, I've got answers for anything you're going to do, but I don't really have anything proactive to, to pressure you. But I think he worked out pretty well there. And as you said, Death Spite's not going to be uh, too impactful this turn. We do see Grom, so d double legendary draw, one turn after another. It's uh, pretty nice. Well paid. <laughs> uh, wait, we saw the stats. 391 legendaries were used in every single deck. I mean, combined. Yeah, yeah. More than epics. More than epics. So it was like 365, I think. And I'm not sure epics. if we count epics as epics overall, because legendary card, you can only use one, and epics you can use two. So in theory, you would even so more, right? I mean, you mean different cards in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably, probably right, because... Um, when you count it, only few classes are using epic cards anyway. Like Druid is epic head, right? Hmm. And Law, uh, what else do we have there uh, as an epic? Uh, Ancient of War. Ancient of War, right. And um, Force of Nature. Force of Nature is epic, yeah. So th that's like six cards. And there are so many Druids as well. Yeah, it's all the Druids bringing yeah. the epics so <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Everyone else is like, no. That was kind of a, a, a weird turn there for, for Moody. Like, not that it was a bad turn whatsoever, but you know, kind of awkward to not play your weapon when you have another one ready in hand. The uh, true heart is down now, um, so you can start stacking up that armor. But just uh, awkward to just have all that push back down by the minions already on the board, and now Lothab's going to come down and be protected by the taunt. So you know, normally it feels bad to play five health minion when there's a second charge death bite. Uh, ready to go, but behind two taunts, got to feel really good. Smoody was probably going for a brawl. He hoped that he will get a good one. Um, can he get an ex a nice execute here? Uh, he can still. He'll have mana for whatever he wants. He can armor up, attack with the weapon, and sh like armor up, shield slam. Hmm. It's a tough one, isn't it? Like, you can go for the shield slam, but I <laughs> it's really difficult to not just want to play boom here. Just because you just put something on the board. Do you attack before or after? Maybe bombs can actually do your work. <laughs> Maybe you don't attack at all. I don't know. Because it forces him to trade everything into boom. Or go face. It's a real tough one, actually. Because I just feel like if he just armors up, say, armor up shield, slam, low thab, then he's just reset the same turn. And then Powder's just got another turn to play. You know, like, just create this board again. 
Uh, yeah. Whereas I think the bombs from Boom can actually clear off some of these smaller minions. Even if they just clear off, like you know, like the two-two, then like the board isn't the same, and the weapons gonna have much, uh, much bigger impact. But then in theory, like he had a plan last turn. He had a plan that this is not enough damage to get concerned, especially if you have a hero power that heals, heals you for four. Yeah. So he wants more damage on board uh, to to get a good brawl, especially next turn will he will have ten mana. So brawl for five, and he still has five open. Yeah, and we've just discovered that Powder is running the arcane golem. Combo Such variant. surprise! Uh, well, it, it could have been, could have been Leroy, could have been Leroy. But I actually like the Arcane Golem more. It yeah. makes it so much easier to pull off, as opposed to having to rely on the Emperor mm -hmm. uh, tick to, you know, hit one of the three pieces like at least. Even with Shadow Flames, like earlier. Yeah, yeah, to get a good uh, sort of mid-range Shadow Flame off. Usually, you had you just have to play the Emperor at some point of the game because it's just a good drop. Yeah, and you can't really allow your opponent to. Uh, you can't justify not playing yeah, it, right? Exactly. Yeah. You just have to play something on the board to put some pressure or to put your opponent in position when he has to trade because it has the super taunt. Yeah. Ultimate taunt. Modi would like to get that get in. He's waiting for the get in. By the way, the young Dragon Hawk isn't that bad when you have multiple POs. Oh, it could be. Uh, well, okay, Lothar, you've just called the way I want this match to end. <laughs> Dragon Hawk. <laughs> 10 attack with the Dragon Hawk. Ah, oh, it'd be so good. Well, he did use Dark Peddler and he used Abusive already, but sometimes you can really get a lot of that. Stop ruining my dreams, Nim. <laughs> with logic. You would like that. Like, I want to see a, a Dragon Orc with quadruple PO. Uh, and, and yeah, because he's drawing two POs in this Reno deck, of course. And, uh, and all the other buffs. Bash this armor up pass. Yep, I think Bash? he's. Uh, Why not the second weapon? You still kind of. Weapon can deal damage in the game. Like, we're going to fatigue anyway. Oh, that's a good point. Yep. How, I wonder how... Uh, the guys must be getting pretty low on cards now. We're um, quite far into the decks now. And there's Faceless as well. So, slowly but surely, Moody's uh, getting his <laughs> his combo <laughs> together. And now he's going to put, you know, assert dominance with the 1-1 one, one Dragon pressure! Heart. I can't handle all the pressure. Shut he can Faceless it and get two. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow, the Green Jackson needs to... Be drop down, I think. Heal for five, yeah. Um, what else do you want to do? You want to pressure your opponent for one one? Not it's a really, really, it's a really tough one though, because the second Reno goes down, and then Alex Straza follows. Then you know you're pretty dead, especially with a weapon pre-equipped and ready to go. Okay, you can't go okay. for Temple BGH here. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's completely valid to play it though, because you, like you said, like can you play a one one and pass? Like you know in this matchup, probably not. not. Really. Yeah. Oh my god, do, do you implosion your own 1-1 one, one to create more 1-1s one, that but then, then die to the weapon? To death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. I'm joking, Lothar, I'm joking. You know, I, I get the yoke, I'm just making conversation. <laughs> Small talk. I would actually not hate Dr. Boom and attack here after playing Dr. Boom because you just need to deal one damage to, to Reno. So one bomb should be able to hit it. And you, I you should attack first, right? Because the whirlwind effect? Oh, off the weapon, but you have double executes. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to use execute. Uh, I don't know. I think I'd commit to execute now. Would because you commit? You, what else Alex, is there? Alex Traza, possible another Belcher. Um, Alex Molten, Traza Molten is a big game hunter ta target, right? Molten Giant is also a big game hunter target, and so Moody has crazy. still a chance to draw those cards. And, 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 and he still has a second right? execute. So still the, second you, know, execute you still have and the weapon. Yeah, if he only had one left, then you know sure, I, I'd be sure. more like, yeah, you know, okay, maybe you want to keep hold of it. But I think with the uh, with double execute, you just go face with the damage, put boom on the board, and uh, start pressuring with something, right? You can even drop the Armsmith. I think what that outvalues the execute. Um, oh, he's going for the do uh, for the triple after all. But we have no attack. I would. <gasps> Okay, that's weird, right? Oh my god, there can be a buff! There is power! The dragon oh, oh, that's the PO! <laughs> oh my god. Are we probably not going to see it, right? Are we going to see it? It's 10 well, damage. Probably not. There's Too bad it doesn't have charge. Oh man. Right? Because then the Young face Young dragon hog face. Like well, honestly, yeah. there's 22 uh, points of attack right now, right here. <laughs> because he has a combo in hand for 16, and then he has uh, 6. Yeah, that's actually pretty crazy. Right? It's not bad. One of the problems that, that Powder's going to face now is he has that much damage, but it isn't lethal. When does he use it? Right? Yeah. Because if he commits to it and then the warrior just stabilize, clears up, like, Brawl stabilize, 
then how does he ever win? Because this is the win condition, either exactly. this or fatigue. And he's used Reno, so he can't, you know, he can't bring his health all the way back up and win the fatigue while that way. So this is going to be really, really tough. That's for him why. To that's deal why with. I thought this matchup is really good for Warrior if uh, if played correctly. It's happening, guys! Oh my God! Instant regret from Moody. No, no, no! Well, no, 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 don't do it. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Okay. Wait, what? Why? Uh, this is okay. Is it? There's a death spite waiting for that situation. Yeah, but how, how else was he going to clear the board? There's the big game hunter. Yeah, he wants to save that for something else, though. But there's a 7-7 seven, seven minion just standing yeah. there. And there's a revenge now. Well, there is still what in the deck. Gromash, um, Gedon. Ragnaros is rotated out, right? Mostly. Yeah. yeah but Deathwing. That could be anything, Nimsh. No, like, I'm seriously, it's, uh, what about Deathwing and Warriors? Maybe. Like, in Contra Warriors, Deathwing was playable yeah, no. most of the time. Is that Forsen playing? Nope. Then <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, No, I mean, I mean Fibonacci was playing. Yeah, Fibonacci was playing. I don't think it was this list, though. I'm not sure, though. I'm not too sure. So we'll see. I'm sure we'll find out, though. Um, like, most of the people are scared to play Deathwing in the Contra Warrior, but it does make sense so if you go for the last choices. turns. Hmm. So again, but both players are in that sort of weird position that because they're both quite controlly decks, they only really have answers in hand. Um, so it's kind of kind of awkward. And uh, Moody is going to go for clear the board with the weapon, drop the armor smith, and uh, not even relock the other weapon actually, which is interesting. Uh, fearful of a uh, Harrison or an ooze, I imagine, because you know there's not a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to just lock um, lock the weapon in and save the mana. And we do now see Alex Straza. Alex Straza can buff your opponent, <laughs> basically heal him for one. Heal for one. She is now the life binder. She's bringing life <laughs> here. Have this one HP. And this is crazy, though, because, you know, we saw that Moody did keep hold of both executes as well. So, you know, he has just easy ways. And you got to think what's left for, for powder. Probably a molten giant. Well, there's also Faceless that possibly copies something big. So then you have an execute for that as well. You can copy Grommage. That's true. So you probably won't play that Gromash until you actually kill your you opponent. Know, it's pretty crazy. You can copy the Gromash and kill it with Siphon Soul. Yeah. Because they've been yep. if Siphon Soul's been reduced. Oh, so that's man. actually super strong play. That's ugly. Yeah. But um, you have to make some form of threats right on the bottom. And here it is. The, the two one owl. <laughs> heal and your opponent for one. one. Well. Powder giveth, <laughs> powder taketh away. But uh, it's really surprising to for me like what owl owl uh, is not surprising at all like he wants to silence uh, armor smith to reduce the armor because he has only a certain amount of damage in his deck he doesn't have many more threats so powder is on a great way to lose this match overall he needs to make this subpar place so i mean the moody is in a position to win this game i i, I, I agree with that because he has way more threats right now right he has armor up that's enough to win this game and tank up actually tank up yep i wonder if um if powder's actually playing drax or not we've not seen it uh, but it's definitely a possibility it is a pos it's possible like uh, most people play only one alex Draxus or drax but there are some lists that run both of them and drax would be uh awkward uh useful overall because you get infernals but then 15 health is within reach yeah you'd have to sort of play not into a weapon uh, and then the, at least if there was a weapon uh, equipped then you can sort of try and answer that but Twisting Nether is definitely not going to help too much. Um, and this is uh, such a, a strange matchup. I really like how Moody is playing it. He's super patient, just keeping his removal for the... Like, he was in fatigue game from turn two. Basically, armor up turn two, saying, I'm going to win with armors. Armor yeah, and, and the thing is, as well, is he knows he can surpass the Warlock's health, and he's already seen Reno. So now, uh, it looks like Powder's just saying, right, well, I've, and, and I agree with this, actually. Like, he's got to kill him at some point, and... If he just passes another turn, what's that realistically going to achieve? Well, in theory, nothing on the board was contesting those Archic Golems. Yeah. So that's additional 4 damage from at least one. Because it will probably survive. The other one might be dead to an execute, actually, for one damage. Uh, but probably will be killed with a weapon. But it's still kind of 
Demon yeah. Damage. Yeah, I mean, I think something along the lines of like Shield Maiden, Armor Up, Fire War Axe to kill one of them off seems pretty reasonable. You gain tons, of, you gain nine more armor, so effectively negate that previous yeah. turn of, of damage. And yeah, you take four more, but then every single turn that, that the second Arcane Golem's alive, it's actually just doing nothing except for six. It's costing you two mana a turn exactly. to not take damage. So. What else is there in the deck for Powder? Like, how can he pressure? Hellfire is free damage. He might have that one Belcher. Big Game Hunter can deal maybe three, four damage if unanswered for one turn. But with the weapons and so much armor. Yeah, and also with this, um, with the minions, if they're not clear, they're slowly going to just poke Powder down to get into within range of Grom. And, and there's not a lot Powder can actually do to play around that sort of thing. That's a good draw. Kappa. Uh, well, Siphon Solon seems bad. Oh, so <laughs> well, that's, that's a 2-3 that can pressure at endgame. <laughs> it can chip away his armor before he gives him 5 health. Yeah, Siphon Soul, because you need to kind of deal as much damage as possible with the Arcan Golem. That's your only way to win this match. I Wouldn't you play Death Spite last time instead of the Fear of War X? Uh... I suppose he's not too afraid of any burst damage because he's seen like effectively the combo. Um, but he's probably, I think he's just valuing armor and, uh, armoring up every turn. What and if Fire Warax did sort of the same job Death Bite would do, and he isn't quite close enough to be able to grum uh, the Warlock down from like 20 ish. By the way, guys, why, why would Pile Thunder mm. not play Zombie Chow and uh, Taunt it up with Sun Fury to protect uh, the Arcing Golem? Like, you still need minions to win. It's not like the 5 heal obviously might be bad, but then it protects your Arcing Golem. So overall, Zombie Chow would deal more damage. The only way time. Zombie Chow will get him some value in this situation is if it will be played as the last card to win the fatigue game, I think. But here he will protect uh, the, the Arcane Golem from the weapon, because you know you're losing Arcane Golem to the weapon. I think what he's relying on is he needs the Sun Fury to give taunt to a Molten Giant. And, okay. and just, and just, and he's not seeing Execute yet, so that's still going to be a problem. But, you know, he, he's just like, I need to taunt something big that the warrior can't get through, and that's how I'm going to win this game. So that might be the reason why he held on to it there, because sure. I agree we're getting the zombie child down and pushing, um, but because it would cost him the Sun Fury as well, I think it might be a bit too much when he just needs something like a, a big body. Like He didn't attack deliberately. De oh, my God. How do you pronounce <laughs> that? Deliberately. Thank you. Um, <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. You can use on purpose. It's also good. <laughs> But, uh, this is a, this is actually a really good draw. I didn't actually know what was left in Powder's deck. I forgot he hadn't played Boom yet. I know we've not seen the Molten, but uh, Boom, you know, that's something that could draw out and execute, which then suddenly makes Molten Torn a lot stronger. He might not even play Molten Giant. Second Revenge. And this time oh. Revenge is actually active as well. Oh, it's actually bad for for Moody because he kills, kills his, his own yeah. armor smith. Huh. Well. That's interesting. And you can't really play Baron Geddon Revenge because it's Dr. Boom still is left in one. Maybe. So this will be the execute turn. Is there any way to play Gromash? And go for Gromash Revenge to kill Boom? Like uh, Gromash uh, Revenge kill Boom? Uh, uh, well, you but you then it's left for to death for, for with yeah, with I, mean, I mean, demon rev. Yeah, you, you you can revenge and then hit in, um, but the. Uh, but do you need Gromash to win this game? I think Gromash is going to be important if it goes to fatigue, because then you just push. What you do is you set them up at X health, uh, and then push for. So then the fatigue hits for say like ten or you know or whatever. But the fatigue kills the warlock the turn after you play Gromash. Sure. So there's nothing they can do about it. and They can't react. Um, but it's definitely rough. I think Moody's pretty set on just playing hyper defensive and just waiting this game out. We've seen previous turns where he's chosen to, instead of equipping Despite, maybe being a bit more proactive, equipping the Fiery War Axe and just armor up, armor up, armor up. Um, really cool that he's actually just not even bothered about uh, his opponent's health uh, at, the, at the moment, mainly because Molten Giant is still a card, as we can see. Yeah, it's and actually. The, and the, the issue day. is Powder can't really tap. <laughs> if he can tap and lower his health to Molten, then he just taps into Fatigue faster, which then, you know, makes the game way more awkward because of what I, was, I discussed about Grand Prix. Fatigue previously. is so devastating when you get to it. Like, the first two cards is fine. Like, I'm taking one, I'm taking two, but then suddenly it's like, I'm taking five, I'm taking six, no and then you just die. Sylvanas is another nice threat. Yeah, and so what, I, what... I think you should play the Sunfield Protector and move the two bombs, right? To tone up the bombs. What about taunting Sylvanas? So that uh, the weapon attack will have to go into Sylvanas instead. Yeah, I think you probably it. value the Sylvanas stealing a minion at this point in the game. Um, so, 
That would have actually been a pretty good play, tying the bombs up, because there's no good way to deal with it. We can see that Revenge and, and Despite yeah, would have would have dealt with it. But we, Revenge already, right? Yeah. So you, you don't expect uh, expect, expect another nine one, times right? out of ten. I think he's actually just really all in on this Molten Giant and uh, and torn it up. Because once you hit for eight, when, if you can get one hit off with a Molten Giant, that should be enough to, to push forward through the fatigue uh, stage of the game. So. But then there is the Sylvanas and Iron. What are these bombs going to do, more importantly? Yeah, the oh. damage from the bomb is moving for it. Three and... Oh, that's a okay, that's pretty reasonable. He does heal four back up with his uh, hero power, but that's definitely pretty rough. Fatigue for powder, so already in that range. Yeah, I actually think he just passes this turn. <laughs> I'm being serious. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, because all of his minions, like the zombie child doesn't help because it heals. The Sun Fury he wants for the Molten Giant. Twisting that is pointless, of course. Demon Wrath. Hellfire, I think, would be better if he was lower health to set up the, again, you know, lethal through fatigue. Uh, but he isn't at that stage yet. And big game hunter, you haven't seen Grom. Mm -hmm. The problem he has also is that he doesn't have any heals anymore. So, Grom. Oh, you, you know what he could do? Do you think BGH is worth? Because the thing is, in the, if you play this matchup in fatigue a lot or against any warrior in fatigue, Grom normally comes down the turn before you die of fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. So you can never BGH it because it's exactly. going to be the last turn. Exactly. Whereas if you put it down now, it either force a weapon hit or get, as we can see, Geddon. But Geddon helps the Warlock <gasps> because of the two damage. He tapped! It played to be honest, the giant. I, I was just on the brink of saying that he probably shouldn't have tapped the last turn. But wow. So he took two damage, right? Next turn he's taking three damage, which means Gromash is not lethal. Because it will be 17, right? No, mm -hmm. it is. It is lethal. Free damage, so he's... No, it won. Uh, it's one off. But that was pretty good planning there. Yep, and now... But the I mean, what, what, is it, what is it to even draw from Moody? But this, eh? is, this is the only... Uh, um, for Powder, if he doesn't win next turn, that's the end of the game. Yeah, because he'll just die. Um, so, if he wanted to go like as quick as possible, he should have tapped mid-game more than, yeah. than in this situation, and right? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking as well. Like, so, so yeah. mood is mood is gonna heal for heal for four, right? Mood is gonna get four more armor. That's almost the yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Like he has so to heal whatever happens. He'll right? effectively have six health. Oh, Grom's coming down now. And he's still is he heals. trading the molten? I, I think he is. He, he has, has to, to right? trade. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, he would still win if he would not trade there. I, f I think. But this, uh, this is a certain victory at this point. There's too much damage coming, and he still has Gedon as a burst card. But now so you have to play Zombie Chow, Sun Fury Protector, and, and you. Uh, yes, but you turned up on the Big Game Hunter. Yeah. Okay. BGH isn't really going to help. Geddon's going to clear off the, the BGH that's on the board, but do two damage, so put him down to, what, 12? Uh, so he's still at 12, up. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he takes four, but armor's up four, so yeah, he'll be at 12, and uh, that's not going to be enough. Yeah, Next turn he's getting four damage from the fatigue yeah. and then four five, so that's nine. So one trick, uh, sorry, one tick from the Baron Geddon is lethal. So playing Baron Geddon and armoring up is winning the game right now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think there's almost no other play as well. There's like no other play you really. Well, you can play Sylvanas, take the zombie chow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's one of those good plays. Good plays, yeah. All right, so Moody goes for it. I wonder if Moody knows what exact cards are in the Father's hand, but he didn't play any removal except for Shadow Flame. So at this point, you have to assume Twisting Nether, Hellfire, you haven't seen them, and Powder concedes. This means Moody wins the match and goes uh, into another round with a 2 0 score. Wow. That what, what a crazy set overall, as well, actually. That was super close. And it was long as hell. Yeah. <laughs> There's also that. There's also that. It, it took five games, and the last game took to fatigue. So I, I'm not sure, but it, I think it was like 60 minutes match. Something like that? Possibly, possibly. Moody, Moody will join us right now on, yeah. on the couch. And we'll be able to ask Moody about uh, a couple of uh, interesting plays that he did in the previous rounds, right? Hello, Moody. Hey, Moody. How are you doing, man? Congratulations on the win. Thank, Thank you. you. How do you feel right now? That was a really stressful match, right? Uh, uh, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you're still shaking a bit? Uh, I, I didn't know for sure how what, what cards, cards you have left. left. So, But, but when, when I, I saw Faceless and when I saw all his burst, I, I thought that... My hero power should uh, probably should win. So what was your assumption? He had four cards in hand. What did you, what did you think he has? Uh, Bran? No, that was not Bran. But that uh, was Shadow Flame. 
Hellfire. Okay, he he had Hellfire. He had Twisting Nether. He had oh, yeah. Nether. Uh, Demon Wrath and, and the Mortal last Coin. and Mortal Coin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so after so many so, uh, so many um, rounds, obviously it's hard to to keep track yeah. of everything. But in general, you were like uh, convinced that you have a uh, upper hand in the matchup. Uh, well, when, when I, I saw Alex Trust in the um, against Druid, Druid, I thought, I thought he, he doesn't, doesn't play. play um, Jaraxxus? He doesn't, doesn't play Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that particular, particular list, list I used to play, play its Hoid list. He reached uh, Legend 1, and, and I knew all his cards. cards. So, so I knew what... Uh, uh, I wrote down all his uh, big threats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I pretty much knew I was playing against Morton. Mm -hmm. So I was familiar with his list. Yeah. Okay. So, so was your strategy from the beginning just to like go to the fi uh, go to fatigue? Uh, just yes, make sure yes. you're out of health of yes, the, the first range. Yes, I want to make sure I'm out of his combo reach. Yeah. Okay. And uh, coming back to another great match that you had was Druid versus Druid, where he had double Wild Grove, Ancient of Lore, uh, Torison, and you still won on free health. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we both got pretty lucky with the draws. Uh, just <laughs> Druid Mirror, right? I don't know what to say. Just Druid things. Yeah. Druid happens. And then when you play Druid versus Reno Lock, there, was a, there, there were a couple of turns where you weren't exactly sure what to do. Um, For example, you kept the swipe, used Force of Nature before, uh, just uh, slamming the swipe. I th yes, yes, I, uh, I, I used Force, Force of, nature of Nature because, because uh, uh, if he implodes me, then, then swipe, swipe is better. better. But, but I, I had a really bad hand against... against uh, like in, in that, that particular, particular matchup, matchup, the Druid must uh, apply pressure. pressure. So, so the Reno Lock can't, um, can't combo him down. down. Yeah. But, but I got, got all the big cards, and then he just put threat of uh, he he just put uh, threat after threat, and I, I need to react. And when I need to when you need to react as a druid, that's not that's not a really good um, position to be. Yeah. 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 All right, and uh, guys, any questions for Moody? Not really. We saw everything in game. Yeah, yeah. The nice five five game set, which is yeah. always good. Nice for us, probably less a uh, no, bit, no, bit more I stressful uh, for you. So I really <laughs> enjoy this uh, this long game. So I I would much rather play this type of games than Party Mirror, Druid Mirror, Zoo. Okay. Yeah. And how are you how are you enjoying the whole event, Tavern Tales? Well, well it's, it's more uh, it's, it's better, better than I thought. thought. And, and we'll, we'll see. see. I, I hope I go I don't go like. like Oh, three. From <laughs> because <laughs> you need only one more yeah, win you need one to more advance win. the day two, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, all right, so uh, I think that will be it for round two. We had a backup match, but it's uh, it's like way over. So they <laughs> they, they finished. You were g you guys were still in, on game one, and they finished like everything. I think. Yeah. But uh, it's all right. So thank you guys uh, for watching this one round. We have still three more because this is a Swiss. Everybody plays versus everybody. So we actually had a couple of matches uh, being done at the same time. Uh, we will try to update you with the scores when we go back after the break. But for now, uh, we just go into the break. So give us some time to prepare the next match and see you guys in a moment. <laughs>